So our first move here is to head out into the swamp and the uh, easiest way, the best way, the traditional way to get there uh, is by river. Uh, we're going to be taking uh, some kayaks at least part of the way and then when the water gets too shallow we're going to have to slog our way in. On our way in, we have our uh, encounter, the one of the many encounters, uh, with a large, uh, well, the usual megafauna that you would find uh, in this area uh, of the bovine kind. Now this thing happens to be a bull and it's a water buffalo, a forest buffalo, and they are notoriously ill-tempered. As the water gets shallow, we have to tie up the kayaks because the rest of the way in is going to be a slog through the swamp. Heading as we're about to head up uh, the stream, just want to give you a quick briefing. Hi, my name's Alon Cassidy. I will be your guide for the next few days. Um, this area here is called Langobai. This is the lowest section of Langobai. I will get into explaining what a bai is a little later. But uh, Langobai is divided into three parts, basically an clearing that's divided into three parts. This is the lowest one that connects up with the Likoli River. The middle section is the biggest section and we're about to head into that. And then the last section, the third section, is pretty is this sort of smallish section but it's the same size as here really. And that is the section where we have the lodge. So we need to just walk up this stream, avoiding a few buffaloes and going through some mud but mostly water up to Lango camp and uh, in a straight line it is about a kilometre point two, so 1,200 metres. Should take us about an hour and a half. <laughs> if that gives you any indication of the speed we'll be travelling. <laughs> um, there is a very good chance that we come in contact with buffaloes on this walk or other dangerous games like elephant or sititunga. Please, we want to stay together at all times. We don't want to spread out as a group, we want to stick together. And if we do come across any, any situation, any dangerous situation, I will give you an instruction, something like, come to me, get behind that tree, move this way, move that way, follow that path. Please obey this instruction as quickly and efficiently as possible. This way we'll be able to avoid any injuries and hopefully get a good sighting it as well. Um, any questions so far?
Does Just in case you're wondering, him? this is the resident bull elephant, and he's headed toward the bye as well. As a matter of fact, it's getting close to night, and it's going to go dark very shortly, and uh, that is rain that you hear. This bull is very used to people. He's uh, very placid, easy to get along with. And uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, you couldn't ask for more uh, in a wildlife uh, viewing. Doesn't mind getting his picture taken. Now this is the buy at night. Now a buy is, in a sense, artificial. But it's not made by people, it's made by elephants. What happens is the elephants have gone in there and they have cleared out the trees. They've done that for a particular reason. There's salt here. And so at night the elephants come in and you can uh, see them in the darkness uh, kick away the silt or use their trunks kind of like a, uh, uh, a leaf blower to blow the silt away and then to drink up some of the salt water. That is why the elephants come here. Now this video was taken with my infrared spotlight. You're not allowed to put a white light or probably even a filtered light uh, on the by at night because it disturbs the animals. But the animals can't see the infrared spotlight. Now incidentally I've gone to a split screen here so that you've uh, got some uh, video on the top and some on the bottom of the elephants at night in the by. I think you can see pretty clearly in this video that there are at least four elephants in that location right now. My schedule in the swamp was uh, uh, pretty much the same almost every day. I, uh, went uh, on a uh, night safari at uh, 4.30 a.m. We got back around uh, 6 o'clock in the morning for uh, breakfast and by 7 we were out on a, uh, a walk. So, um, here we have a nice big park. We call this an elephant boulevard. It looks a bit like a string, but um, that's because all the elephants over the last few hundred years that have walked up and down here have created enough of a pathway for water to flow, flow through. Otherwise, this whole area would just be a, a big swamp, a big marsh. And if you look on the left hand side and if you look on the right hand side, you'll see you've got these rather tall, straight trees which have big, broad leaves. These are um, known as Mitrogena ciliata, wonderful um, scientific name, but in guiding terms we often call them swamp trees, because if you try and walk to the base of one, you will be knee deep in mud, sometimes more. And as we walk along this Elephant Boulevard, you must just watch out on the sides you see lots of tracks, elephants coming up and down, buffaloes, sometimes hogs. The first time I saw leopard tracks was, and the first time seeing leopard tracks in Atsala was along this path as well. Sounds like you're going to have a bit of weight. Right, there we go. monitors from African parks. And they've just come back from a, a monitoring session at a new buy that they found. They found new buy, it's relatively nice. About two years since they, they discovered it. And these uh, three guys are 
these guys are the eco monitors, not the eco guards. So they they work with the research team and they go out and they monitor the buys or they collect data and they do transects. Very very well knowledge in the forest. And three of the four of them have taught me a lot in the forest. Okay. And I've worked a lot with those guys, so very deep respect for them. Come more forward, it becomes shallower. We have a bit of a problem here. Uh, this forest buffalo, uh, this bull, uh, does not want us to continue in the direction that we need to go in order to get back to the lodge. And it's uh, going to be getting late soon, uh, going to be getting dark, and you certainly don't want to be out in the swamp at night. Well, it looks as if uh, we've won the uh, battle of the wills here for a second, but then the bull changes his mind. Alan is uh, trying to put pressure on the bull to convince it to move along. Eventually, Alan uh, wins his argument with the with the bull, and we do make it back to the uh, lodge, and. Uh, before you go back into the lodge, of course, you uh, need to uh, go through the washing, the uh, the ritual of the washing of the shoes. Well, we didn't find Mokeli and Bembe, but he could still be here somewhere. It's a large forest. <laughs> 